Let's play a game. Put your finger down if you've heard one of the following. You can just swap your existing battery for a lithium. Lithium batteries are more dangerous than lead. Lithium batteries don't work when it's cold. Lithium batteries don't need any maintenance or checks. And put this last finger down if you have no clue if what I've said is myth or fact. So, should we address some of these? If you're debating putting lithium batteries in your motorhome, campervan or caravan, this video is for you. I got the nicest compliment at the NEC show. Somebody told me that they love watching my videos because I don't make things too technical. And that is absolutely my aim. There are some very clever people out there who make videos who are very in depth and can give you all the different technical aspects, but that's not me. I'm not an electrician. And frankly, I don't really understand electrics. And I know there are plenty of us motorhome and van owners out there who kind of get the basics, but don't really understand it. And frankly, when you're going to look for new batteries, if you've damaged your batteries like I have, or if you know you want to upgrade your system and you're debating something like changing to lithium, but you don't know the questions to ask, you're not sure what to look for, and you don't want to get ripped off or buy the wrong thing and waste a load of money, what do you do? Thankfully, I had some help in the form of the very lovely Rob from Oak Tree Motorhomes. They fit lithium batteries at Oak Tree Motorhomes. You've got to get an appointment. They have a huge long wait because they're very, very popular and very well thought of. But he was kind enough to spend over an hour chatting with me and answering all of your questions. I asked on both Instagram and on Facebook what questions people wanted me to ask him. And he was kind enough to work through those with me, plus some other things that I didn't even know I was supposed to ask. And also help me decide what system was right for my van, if indeed it was right for me. And that is possibly one of the most important points to start on with, that lithium batteries might not be right for you. They might not be right for your setup. They might not be right for how you use your van. And so you might be able to save all of that money and use it elsewhere, which we will get into in more details very shortly. So I want to share all of that knowledge with you. I will do it in the most simple way that I possibly can. And the bits that are a bit more technical, we will let Rob answer in his own words. Before I dive in, if you're new to the channel, hi, welcome. This is a slightly more technical video than some of my other ones, but I do hope you find it useful. And if you'd like to get more videos about motorhoming and van life and living in a motorhome, then by all means hit subscribe. Right, let us get started. So first up, what are the benefits of lithium batteries? Can I, can I just say, before we started this, I was like, can I borrow a battery to do some filming with? So they've given me, look, look, look how lightweight lithium batteries are. No, they've given me one that says dumb. Now, I'm trying not to date that personally, but I think there's only so many ways you can take that. Anyway, let's talk about the benefits of lithium batteries. And the first one, the one that most people who are looking to change know about is weight. So as a comparison, the lead acid battery that was taken out of a motorhome here at Oak Tree Motorhomes recently weighed about 30 kilos and the same size lithium battery, same footprint, lithium battery weighed 13 kilos. So that's 17 kilo saving instantly like that on your motorhome. And for those of us, most of us who have to worry about payload, that huge, especially if you've got two batteries, or you can get rid of one battery entirely, because mine, we upgraded from a 110 amp to a 230 amp battery on the same footprint. I've still only got one battery in my motorhome, but it's double and it weighs less. It's, it's crazy. So the weight difference between a lead battery and a lithium battery is enormous. Next, and the biggest selling point for me after I damaged my lead batteries, is the fact that you can use more of a lithium. So lead, we generally say you can't use more than 50% without damaging it. I can, I can now attest to that because over Christmas, I dropped mine down. It went under 10 volts. The heating wouldn't work, systems wouldn't work, and the batteries never recovered. It now, if I tried to stay off grid, it would only last for about a day, which was insane, given I used to spend three or four days off grid without a problem. But the lithium, lithium, you can use all of it. Now, they advise going to about 80% rather than proper emptying it. But as Rob said, think of it like your phone. Your phone is like a baby lithium battery and you're quite happy to run your phone down and then just plug it in and recharge it. It's not a big drama. And that's exactly the same with lithium batteries that you can get for your van. The other good thing is a lead battery um, has like a performance dropout as the power drops. 
Don't ask me why that's technical, but it just does. Whereas a lithium battery is exactly like your phone. It will work and it will work and it will work and then it will stop. So, you know, you can still use all the apps on your phone. You can make phone calls, you can send text messages, you can take photos, you can do everything that your phone does, even on 1% and then suddenly it dies. And that's exactly the same as lithium batteries in your van or your motorhome. So you have that same level of performance until it's dead. And then you just recharge it. Now there are a couple of caveats. It's not always as simple as just plugging it in and recharging it, but most of the time it is. So that I thought was brilliant. You, you could just dummy proof. We like dummy proof. The other massive benefit is that lithium charges faster than lead. If you're charging it and taking in just off solar, for example, here we go, something to do with resistance and it can accept more charge quicker. Lead acid has a, do you know what? This is one for Rob. Go on, Rob, take it away. Um, and because there's less resistance, in, no energy is lost in pushing the power in, whereas yeah. with lead there is actually some of the energy is lost in the charging process because it's like trying to force a large amount of water through a thin hose pipe, whereas lithium is like a, a larger pipe. It can allow it to flow through with less resistance. Mm -hmm. Couple more benefits. An average lead battery is designed to do about 250, 300 cycles, depending on the make and the type of lead battery. The average lithium battery is designed to do 4,000 cycles, and that's dropping it all the way down to 80% and recharging it. 4,000, that's huge. That's like 10, 15 times the life of a normal lead battery. And you're less likely to destroy the lithium battery by using it too much. You also can't overcharge lithium like you can on lead. So some lead, have you ever heard these people who complain like a sulfur smell or an eggy smell? Often, according to Rob, this is because they've been overcharged, but you can't do that with lithium. It's brilliant. And the other thing that I really like about lithium batteries is they don't discharge when you're not using the van. So if you put your van into storage for the winter, a lead battery will just magically dissipate its energy and power and stuff. Lithium doesn't. It uses about 2% to keep the brain of the battery going. I think it was called the battery monitor going, but that's it. So you can like not use your van for a year and the battery will still be all right. You can't do that with lead. For the battery monitor that's built in, this is a built-in battery management system called yeah. a BMS. Yeah. That is basically the computer part of it that will look after the battery and protect you and the devices. Mm -hmm. So it's got, if you was to put a, something across the two terminals and yeah. right on lead it would spark and try and weld itself, this yeah. will just switch off with a trip switch mm -hmm. and then reset. Okay, so those are the benefits. But what about the cons? Who is it not right for? Well, this is actually really, really simple. If you are going to spend most of your time on a campsite plugged into electric, you don't need a lithium battery. You don't need a lithium battery system. Your normal lead battery, whether that's a lead acid or a gel or whatever's in your van, will be fine. And it will probably last you five or six years before you even have to worry about changing it. Unless you're planning on spending a lot of time off grid and properly using the battery and having to rely on things like solar power, don't worry about it. You do not need to invest in a lithium battery system. The one that comes with your motorhome will be absolutely fine. Now the caveat to that of course is if you've bought a second hand van and that battery has already been damaged then you might want to change it. But again if you are just planning to go to campsites and use the electric hookup just buy a cheaper lead battery rather than investing in a lithium system and we will talk about cost very soon. The other big thing to know is temperature. Now lithium you can use it all the way down to like minus 20. You can discharge it. What you can't do is charge it when it's really, really cold. What you have to do is get the temperature of the battery back up to above zero, and then it will start taking a charge again. Rob explains this much better than I do. Cold is a big thing with lithium. There's a lot of myths out there about it. Yeah. Um, <laughs> everyone talks about cold, okay. So lithium can be safely discharged down to minus 20. You could put it in a freezer overnight, take it out and connect to it and use the power yeah. with no problem. But it doesn't like being charged when the core of the battery is below zero. Okay. This thing is full of basically like big Duracell cells. They don't like, you can degrade them over time by charging them at below zero. Yeah. So there are heated battery options yeah. for people, for specialist uh, occasions who are traveling, you know, really extreme. But generally most of the time, cold isn't an issue because the battery is inside the van. Yeah. Um, if it's in an outside locker, then that may be slightly more of an issue. Um, that's where we would recommend the one with the built-in heating element. 
So that's what, so if um, like myself, when I'm not in the van, yep. it goes into a storage yard, yep. and it's been minus five, minus seven at the moment. Is there anything different that you would suggest someone with a lithium battery does when they pick their van up from storage? Um, if you've got solar, it's been constantly topped up. These actually won't accept a charge below zero. Yeah. Uh, but the ones that have a heating element in, because we do do a range with that as well, and a battery monitor, they use the first part of any charge going in to warm the cells up to above zero. Mm -hmm. Then it will allow the charge into the cells. Okay. So then it will charge actually faster and you get that time back because it's charging optimally. But like I say, ours don't accept a charge. We've had a few people lately rang us up, didn't realise, oh, my battery won't take a charge. Yeah. It's because it's been really cold the last really few weeks. Cold, yeah. um, and then as soon as it gets above zero, it will take the yep, charge. Yep, yep, yeah. yep. And it allows it in again at an optimal temperature. Yeah. Um, I mean, we routinely start all the motor rooms outside once a week to yeah. keep the batteries topped up because yeah. they're lead, lead starting batteries. And we get a hard frost, and then the next day, five won't start. Yeah. The cold's killed them off. Yeah. It does happen. Lead doesn't like cold either. Uh, no, it doesn't. Uh, and yes, you can cause damage, but it's more when the battery is flat nearly and you put a big charge in yeah. from low and it's minus five in the battery. That could potentially degrade it a bit more. The thing to remember of that is, of course, lead doesn't like cold either in fact it discharges lead just discharges itself way worse when it's really cold so that, that is not necessarily a con against lithium that's a con against all batteries but well worth knowing especially if you're going to take your motorhome into like the mountains and go motorhome skiing or something like that over winter one big concern i've got is fire how likely is this thing to catch fire in my van um, I know exactly what you mean. There was the phone issue and, yeah. and these radio controlled car batteries. Yeah. They, are, they are lithium ion polymer and, and other forms of lithium. Okay. Ours are lithium iron, iron, not iron. ion, iron phosphate, okay. which is called LiPo4. Yeah. That's the most safe form of lithium and stable. Mm -hmm. There are more powerful ones, but they're not as stable. Oh, so okay. that's why they use that because yeah. it's solid. The BMS built in protection will, if it got too hot, it will turn itself off. If yeah. you Park the terminals out, it will switch off. Yeah. That is designed to prevent that. Yeah. Now, these small batteries that you see in devices and these kids' boards, <laughs> hoverboards that catch, they yeah. haven't got one of those built in. No. So there isn't really, it's a bit like a trip switch in your house. This has got that. If you fuse something, it will switch off. Okay. And if, if it does trip or switch itself off, it will reset. Or if there's a constant fault, it will stay off. You know, so it's not dangerous to keep it in the van. You don't have to get up. Really no, no, it's not. You have to get it out. It will be that maybe a spike. Yeah. It's designed if it sees a spike of power, it will switch yeah. off, like your trip switch at home. Yeah. So you've decided you're going to stay off grid a lot with your motorhome or your van. You definitely want a lithium system. Can you just pull out your old lead battery and pop in a lithium battery? Uh, no. But let Rob explain why. It's still a 12 volt battery, yeah. okay. Well, the only difference with the lithium is, is that you can use all of it and it's lighter. It requires a slightly higher charging voltage than a standard battery. Albeit, it is the same charge profile or the same charging voltage as AGM or gel. Okay. I'm trying to be technical, but... Please, yeah, no, this is perfect. <laughs> but the, our lithium battery needs to see a voltage of 14.2 mm -hmm. or up to 14.4 max. Because at that point is when the BMS, the built-in battery management system, will then go into equalisation and balancing of all the cells inside yeah. for longevity and keep everything balanced. Yeah. With the very old LED chargers, they tend to charge at 12.8, 13.2, something like that, some of the very old ones. So then technically it will fill the battery, but it won't trip it won't be enough to nudge the BMS to start doing the balancing. Because until it sees that voltage, that's when it goes into a balancing mode for, for longevity. And in really, really simple terms, is that taking the exact same solar input and just giving it to the battery with a bit more oomph? Yes. So your standard solar panel, they all have a solar controller of some sort. Yeah. So the brain, if you like, the little yeah. distribution part of it. That The voltage just, the panel creates voltage from sunlight and it sends it down two wires and it has to go to a little control box, which is something like this. Yeah. <laughs> um, they all look very similar it's a box of that similar size generally that's a smaller one yeah. and then what that does is that allows through that converts that voltage or whatever it is to the correct voltage for the battery yeah so some have an, a button or an adjustment or you can program them this you can program it's Bluetooth okay. for lead gel AGM or lithium depending okay. on on the solar controller yeah. and then also when it senses that the battery is full it will stop shoving power down to the battery yep. so it will regulate it that's what it is it's a regulator yep. um, 
The difference between a standard solar controller and an MPPT, which is multi-point precision tracking something, yeah. uh, <laughs> charge controller, this is more intelligent. Yeah. It's like a tuned version, yeah. okay? It's programmable. Yeah. It happens to be Bluetooth. Uh, we love the Victron stuff because of that ability yeah. to actually log into it and see what it's doing and set the charges. Yeah. And also, if someone has a problem, they can log into it, screenshot it and text it to us so we can help them out. Okay, that's because cool. if it just has a red light and a green light, what does that mean? Yeah. We've no idea. Yeah. We would never need to put a meter on it to see that, but yeah. then we can see it automatically with the latest ones. They're about 100 pounds. Okay. Start at 100 quid. So, and that with the lithium will get you 30% more at your solar panel. And that's purely because the lithium is, is better. It's better, less resistance. Yes. It can accept a charge. Lead batteries can only take a short, what you call bulk charge, a, a big charge, yeah. and then they go to what's called a float, or we would call it in the old days, trickle charge. Yes. And take a long time, because that's how they like it. Yeah. Lithium, we can put a, a big charge in for, for virtually all of it. Okay. So if the sun comes out yeah. in its vengeance, yeah. it's been cloudy, and you've got a lot of solar panels, and yeah. they start trying to shove a lot of power into a lead battery, it may only take it for half an hour, then go into float. Okay. So you're missing out, possibly, yeah. on windows of power. Or the same with your driving power and you know engine power, yeah. which we'll come to with the yeah. <laughs> DC, um, and especially if you've got you know two three hundred watts of solar and the sun comes out, well, it will take all of that for while the sun's out. Wow! Whereas you could miss out and only get half of that maybe yeah. if your battery's gone into float. So what happens when the lithium becomes full if it hasn't got the trickle? When it charge? when it when it comes full, it will just sit there, and these devices know that okay. with the voltage that they see, because they're programmed to turn off at set so voltage they just, they just cut off okay. they just stop putting power in yeah um so you can't overcharge them you don't no, have to manually no. do anything you can't these are programmed like that and this also has a built-in device that okay. won't allow it so. okay so how much solar do you need <laughs> the answer to this one is it depends it depends how much time you're going to spend off grid it depends how many batteries you've got to charge it depends what sort of appliances you want to use how quickly you're going to drain your batteries there are lots of caveats to that. So in the existing system that's in my motorhome, the solar power charges both my engine battery and my leisure battery. Will this still happen when I turn to a lithium leisure battery? And on that point, making it really, really clear, I'm not talking about lithium batteries in your engine. They are not starter batteries. These are just for leisure batteries for your hab. Yeah. At the that's moment, it, yeah. the Victron solar controllers, the MPPTs only do a single solar controller where you may have a dual, which then siphons off some power to your engine battery and then to your leisure battery. They don't do that with this because the voltage we want for, you, for the lithium is higher than what your engine battery would like. We want to maximize the power to your leisure battery, which is the bigger store of energy than your engine battery. And for most people, 90% of the time, they're using their van, their engine battery is fine. It doesn't need to rob your solar of charge for yeah. that. If you're leaving your van in storage, it is handy. Yeah. You know, people who, who, there are occasions where that is the case. So there's a little device called a, we use the Votronic Battery Master. It looks a bit like that. Yeah. The 35 pound, it's a little okay. three amp charger. That's just two wires that we connect to the lithium, to your engine battery. That when it sees the engine battery drop below, I think it's 12.8 volts, it will, allow a little the, the lithium will just feed a little a few amps of charge to keep that topped up but then only as and when we cry required yeah. rather than a a dumb solar controller that's just sending cycling 30 percent i think it's about 30 percent to the engine battery all the time which when you're wild camping with it you don't want that going to the engine battery no, don't need you don't it. need it no. so that's the most efficient way it's not it doesn't cost a lot of money very okay. simple to fit yeah and before people say that the Votronic Matching Master isn't for lithium, it's not for charging lithium, but we've got hundreds out there connected to lithium but fine to charge to the lead. So, we've talked about the MPPT, I'm saying that like I understand, I, I do understand it more now, but you've It's just got, a soup to solar controller, up. yeah. Well, what's the DC to DC thing that we were talking about? And actually, what is the... Okay, this is what I bought as an example. Yeah. Um, so every motorhome has what is called a split charge relay system. So when you drive the engine, the alternator, which is a generator, a dynamo, yeah. charges your engine battery yeah. for after when you've started it, yeah. keeps your engine battery topped up. And then also a motorhome taps off that and it continues to your leisure battery yeah. and it charges that. Now there's like a queue. Your engine battery is always priority. Yeah. When that hits its charge backup voltage, it will allow it into the back to your caravan motorhome leisure battery. Yeah. 
Now, they all have a standard little relay like this. That's what it's called. It looks a bit like that. This is a souped up version of that. Okay. Because most motorhomes now have anywhere between 110 up to 140, 150 amp alternator, depending on the vehicle. Yeah. And they're only putting out 10, 12 amps, maybe average. And when your fridge is on 12 volt, when you're driving, you're robbing most of that. You may only be getting, it probably takes about six, seven amps, depending, we've seen more, depending on the fridge. Yeah. So you're getting very little on a drive wow. off your engine charge. This will demand from the alternator more power. And this particular one we fit is the Victron Orion 30 amp power. Yeah. So you're gonna get 30 amps. So it's anywhere between three and four and a half times more what you would yeah. get on a short drive. Yeah. We sometimes fit two of these together in series to get 60 amps. Wow. So on a short drive, he's putting 60 amps in per hour. We say to people, if your fridge is cold and you're getting low on battery, turn the fridge off or leave it on gas, we shouldn't do, but, and then you'll get all the charge into your battery on a short, if you're only moving up the coast an hour or somewhere. Yeah. There's a little hack. Leave your fridge off, it will stay cold with the door shut. Yeah. Get your engine power yeah. into the leisure by yeah. doing that. Get into your question about whether you need one. Yeah. If you have a smart alternator and the manufacturer hasn't fitted one of these already, the other term is called a B2B that people refer okay. to them as. Yeah. So the DC, DC charger and B2B charger are the same thing, okay. just a different name. That's yeah. the common names. You do require one because the smart alternators won't up the charge. They don't see the lithium. But if you don't have a smart alternator, it's not essential. And that will upset some people. There's people that say <laughs> you have to have one. But I look at it as a stage one tune. Yeah. We're gonna do your battery and maybe an MPPT. That's yeah. a nice cheap start to set your charger to gel or AGM even. Yeah. You're good to go. It won't ruin your alternator. If you've got no solar and your charger is ancient and it can't charge, then that would be a good option. Okay. Okay. And that will take care of the battery because it's gonna hit that. That's gonna be programmed for lithium. And does um, that take more of it away from your engine battery? So does your engine battery- No, your longer? engine battery is still in the front of the queue. We don't change the queue order. The yeah. engine battery is always at the front of the queue. Yeah. So that is programmed that when it, you know, it won't jump in front of the engine battery. Okay. Engine so battery is always, always priority. So always you always need power to start and drive yeah. away. Yeah. And the size of the wiring, do, can you literally- Yeah, the wiring, in, unless you're adding inverters where we'll be for, yeah. So in principle, there's no wiring changes needed for okay. just swapping a battery or swapping a solar controller. Yeah. If we do fit a DC to DC, we use yes, bigger wires, but yeah. that's because it's a newer install part and we're just okay. running some new cables to that. Yeah. But no, you don't need to be for penny wiring for your split charge relay or your solar or yeah. your mains. No, it's still a 12 volt battery. Okay, so what about maintenance? Do I have to constantly check for like bulging or damage or something? How difficult are these things to look after? So they are pretty much fit and forget Good. because they're sealed, there's no gas in, there's nothing like that. Yeah. Depending how you monitor the battery, if you're just having one battery, I'll advise them to have the one with the built-in Bluetooth monitor that we spoke about. Yeah. It, that has a built-in battery monitor that you connect to with your phone, yeah. iPhone or Android. There's an app, you just connect to it and it gives you an exact fuel gauge from 0% to 100% power. Okay. So okay. there's no volts on a thing or lights or... So it's exactly like your phone? What your yeah, phone yeah, yeah, yeah. It's yeah. exact. Yeah, exact percentage, yeah. so there's never a surprise. We're never gonna get it where your everything turns off because you've got an early warning. And what about in winter? Do I have to disconnect it from the van and carry it around with me in a nice little warm jacket and pop it to bed with a bedtime story? Does it need that kind of molly coddling? No, lead takes a lot of looking after. It's yeah. great, you know, it's, it's been around 150 years. Yeah. So, you know, it's got us to where we are um, and it's great for a lot of applications, but for size, weight and longevity and everything else lithium is the, ne the next the next generation step. of technology um, okay. things move on so the question that i know a lot of you will know is how expensive are these things and are they worth it well to give you a comparison and let me just read my notes so i make sure i've got the right thing here the lithium battery this is 110 amp obviously this is the dummy one but you know a proper one that actually has working bits in it is about 749 pounds uh, that comes with a six-year guarantee by contrast, 110 lead batteries, so either a lead acid or a gel battery, will cost you somewhere between 130 to 200 pounds. You can, of course, get cheaper ones, but a good rated one will cost you about 130 to 200 pounds and will normally come with a one to three year guarantee. So you could get a lead battery for cheaper than you can with the lithium. But bear in mind how much you're going to use your battery system and how quickly you want it to recharge. 
If you're going to use it a lot and you want it to recharge quickly off something like a solar, lithium is absolutely worth it because you will get the use out of it. If you're not, don't bother. Just go with your standard lead system as is fitted in your van and save your money for something else. It's also worth bearing in mind that not everybody treats their batteries as they're supposed to be treated and some people can get through a new battery every single year. We supply the NHS ambulance service with lithium batteries for the ambulances and they routinely get through batteries. They're killing a the battery in two and three months and having to change them because they're flattening them so often wow. for the lead. Yeah. Um, but we've had lithium out with them for nearly five years now and touch wood haven't had one battery failure. Oh, that's amazing. So over the long term, yeah. There are people out there who can squeeze six years out of a lead battery seven if they yeah. really modicoddle it, but I'm sure at that six year point, its yeah. performance is it's working, but it's nowhere near to when it was new. Yeah. All right, so why would I invest in a lithium battery and not something like the EcoFlow? What are the pros and cons to both? The facts are that, is that the lithium battery is way more powerful than the EcoFlow. So if you're just gonna go camping or you're gonna go for a weekend in a field, then the EcoFlow is going to work really well for you. If you're going to live full time in your van or you're going to do an awful lot of off grid for like a few days and you're going to do that on a really regular basis, then you want something that's got the oomph to keep you off grid for as long as you possibly can. So that is where the difference comes from. And again, it's all down to how you are going to use your van. OK, I think all that kind of makes sense. Have you got any final advice? You don't need half as much as what you read on the forums. I see things like people saying on the forums that you should save money by using jump lead cable because it's cheap. It's awful, it's half tin, it's rubbish. Yeah. We use Durite pure copper cable. You know, yeah. it's nice to work with it, it's going to be most efficient and things like that. Yeah. There's a lot of myths out there, uh, like keyboard warriors put stuff. Yeah. Some will really disagree with maybe what I say, but we've been a motor home dealer for 28 years, our techs you know know what they're doing and we've got hundreds and hundreds of vans out there yeah. based upon what I've said and I haven't had a damaged alternator or blown up charger because of it and the nice thing is people can come to you if they have got an issue they have got any yeah. concerns they can phone we're not up. an Amazon store no. I mean you can just go online and buy the batteries yeah. but if you do want our advice and help sometimes it does take a little bit because yeah. there's only a few of us yeah well, that was certainly enlightening. I have learned a lot. I have now upgraded my system to a lithium battery system. I'm not gonna share exactly what I think of it yet because I haven't had time to use it. So I wanted to share the tips and what might be right for you first. And then I'm going to put this to the test as I go around Ireland for the next month or so. And then at the end of that, I can report back on how it works, what I liked, what perhaps I didn't and I can give you a thorough review of the system. But I do hope you found that useful. If you did, a thumbs up is always very much appreciated. And if you are new to the channel and want more videos about motorhoming and van life, be sure to subscribe. Thank you as always for your time and I will see you in the next video. Bye.